This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the flight instruments in the MiG-21 BIS found in DCS World. Starting with the ADI, known as the KPP in the MiG, this will display bank, pitch, and slip. When the RSBN is selected as the main radio navigation source and an active beacon is selected, flight director bars to the currently selected radio will be displayed on the KPP. The scales and reference points on the upper and left hand side of the KPP are used with the PRMG ILS system to display localizer and glide slope signal. The KPP differs from standard Western ADIs in that it uses a vertically rotating drum to display the pitch of the aircraft. The black side of the drum displays negative pitch while the white side of the drum displays positive pitch angles. Current bank angles are displayed on the bank scales on the lower half of the KPP display just on the sides of the slip indicator. Next I'll go over the NPP which is the main navigation instrument in the MiG-21. The NPP displays current magnetic heading at the top of the instrument marked by the triangle. The NPP also displays heading towards the currently selected navigation beacon marked by the circle at the end of the second needle, while the thicker needle displays bearing and radial. Course deviation bars are displayed around the center as are the localizer and glide slope flags. Next, the variometer will display your vertical speed up to plus or minus 200 meters per second and it will also display slip as well as bank. The bank is labeled in 15 degree increments and can be seen on the yellow scale with the yellow line indicating the current bank angle. This makes a great backup to the ADI if the ADI ever fails although typically this will be through a pedo failure and if the pedo fails chances are this instrument's going to fail as well. To the left of the KPP is the indicated airspeed gauge which is graduated in 100 kilometer increments and as we're able to see it is graduated up to 1000 kilometers per hour. Once 1000 kilometers per hour has been exceeded thousands of kilometers will be displayed just underneath the zero towards the top of the gauge as a single digit. As we're able to see, one is displayed underneath the zero, indicating that we're traveling 1,100 kilometers per hour. Current Mach value and true airspeed are displayed on the instrument to the right of the NPP. Next, going over the altimeter, on the lower section we have barometric air pressure. On the outer section of the instrument we have hundreds of meters. And on the intersection of the instrument, we have thousands of meters, up to 30,000 meters. Barometric pressure adjustment is made by rotating the knob just in front and to the left of the instrument behind the gear handle. Climbing out on this takeoff run, we're able to see the altimeter quick climbing according to my current pitch angle. Next, we have the radar altimeter, which has the dangerous altitude alert and indicator light. The altimeter itself displayed directly underneath the main altimeter. The dangerous altitude alert can be set on the panel in front of the stick and the indicator is displayed just above and to the left of the indicated airspeed gauge. The radar altimeter will display altitude directly below the aircraft up to 600 meters and alert you depending on the dangerous altitude alert settings chosen. When bank angles exceed 20 degrees, the radar altimeter's altitude alert will not sound off. To the right of the radar display, starting at the top, is range to the currently selected RSBN station, followed by the engine RPM, graduated from 0 to 110 degrees, followed by engine gas temperature, graduated from 0 to 900 degrees Celsius. The engine RPM indicator has two needles, one labeled with a 1 and one labeled with a 2. These are the low and high pressure compressors, and all readings should be taken off of the high pressure compressor, which is the needle labeled 2. Like with most instruments, the blue indicates normal operating range, the yellow indicates never exceed range, and red indicates dangerous operating ranges. The high pressure compressor should never exceed 107.5% RPM, and the engine gas temperature should never exceed 850 degrees Celsius, though it normally never exceeds 800. Fuel quantity remaining is displayed below the engine gas temperature, graduated from 0 to 600 kilograms, and the remaining quantity can be set manually by rotating the knob below the middle of the instrument itself. In the upper right section, we have the radar warning receiver, 
which I'll save for a separate video, though it very much displays threats like a clock. We also have the G meter and the angle of attack indicator. Current G loading is displayed on the white needle on the G meter, with maximum negative and positive Gs achieved during flight displayed as the two red marks, which are resettable by pressing the reset button to the lower right of the instrument. This is important due to the fact that if you're carrying ordnance, the ordnance will release off of the hard points at about 5.5 Gs. On the angle of attack indicator, current angle of attack is indicated by the white needle, with the best performance zone indicated by the yellow and black marked area, and the dangerous angle of attack zone indicated by the red and black area, with the max of the scale being 33 degrees angle of attack, which, when exceeded, will likely stall out the aircraft. On the PPS indicator panel, we have three red lights indicating that the gear is retracted and locked in. The green light indicates flaps are extended, while the one below it would indicate air brakes are fully extended, with the red light on the left indicating flaps down with the gear retracted. If I drop the gear, we're able to see as the three red lights transition to three green lights, indicating that our gear is dropped and locked, though there is no indicator light to indicate the state of the gear lock on the handle itself. Keep this in mind. The ARU indicator shows the current state of the ARU arm set up in a speed altitude scale. If you're unfamiliar with this, uh, I advise taking a look at page 58 of the flight manual. But essentially, if this system fails to be displaying with the current state of conditions around the airplane, you will have to set it into manual mode and operate it yourself according to the current speed and altitude. The ARU essentially controls the ratio between stick pitch and horizontal tail movement. So, when set incorrectly, flight can be a bit strange at the best of times and downright dangerous depending on other time. As I go into a quick banking turn, which I'd normally be pulling about 22 angle of attack, I managed to pull 10 G's somehow without blacking out. And this shows the state of improper setup on the ARU arm and the result it can have on aircraft control. Another automatic system that requires the occasional monitoring is the nose cone position indicator, displayed directly above the ARU indicator. The nose cone normally being an automatic will control its position automatically, but if this fails you'll have to control it manually and improper setup of the nose cone can have harmful results on the engine, as you will see in a moment. Normally you wouldn't let it get to that point as you'd notice you were doing something wrong and dial it back, but I'm simply demonstrating the extremes of improper nose cone positioning. In this case, it flamed out my engine, forcing me to do an in-air restart. To the left of the fuel quantity gauge, there is the command and main hydraulics indicators. There's not a lot we can do in case of failure here, so if you ever see these values fall out of nominal conditions, simply return to an airfield and put down. To the left of the gear lever is the oxygen level and breath indicator. The breath indicator should be pulsing to indicate normal oxygen flow. And below it is the oxygen pressure indicator. In the lower right section of the central pedestal is the gear brakes air pressure level for the left and right main gear brakes. You can test this by holding the wheel brakes and using left and right rudder input. Above that is the battery capacities indicator. Cabin pressurization and pressure differentials is displayed on the instrument on the bottom left of the central pedestal. If you suspect depressurization in flight, be sure to check this instrument as it displays the state of cockpit pressurization in relation to the outside world. Coming up on the last of the instruments is the mechanical clock, which can be wound and unwound by holding and rotating the right knob, and the stopwatch can be start, stopped, and reset by clicking the right knob. The stopwatch fills the lower section of the mechanical clock display. The mission clock displayed in the upper section of the mechanical clock's display 
can be start, stopped, and reset as well by left clicking the red knob on the left side of the instrument. The time of the mission clock can be set manually as well by holding in the left knob and rotating it such as we did with the right knob to wind it up. The smaller instrument to the right of the clock is the voltmeter, which will indicate the voltage within the DC system, which should be reading about 28 volts with the DC generator online. Next is the engine oil pressure gauge, which will display the current engine oil pressure. Normal operating is between 3 and 4. If it ever drops below 1, this will indicate severe engine problems. And finally, main and auxiliary air pressure is displayed on the gauge just to the left of the radio channel selector.